Let's get all the flops out front here for a game of good advice, bad advice, worst advice. One of the things I know from having done this for a very long time is that as troubled as we probably seem to you, we know you're more troubled. And we care. We want to help you. We know you've got struggles and stress and you know, life problems and relationship things. And we're going to help you tonight. So what I need from you is, I need to know what is on your mind, and the flops here are going to give you some good advice, maybe some bad advice, and some really, truthfully horrific advice. But one of those might work for you, so who has something that you can help with? Yes, please. Um, dogs that poop in the car. I thought it was going to be how to break up with somebody. Oh, <laughs> damn. Go faster that. But it's dogs who poop in the car. And uh, let's start with Joe Lob and go this direction. So, it seems to me the simplest thing would not be to put the dog in the car in the first place. <laughs> Just off the top of my head, that seems that, that would solve the problem. Okay. Um, see, my friend Joe Lob here, he's onto something, but it's not quite there. Now, what you really need to do is get the dog more accustomed to the car. Say, Christmas, for instance. Dogs barking in the house, well, it's a great time to start car training. Get them in the car for a little while. Just forget about it. Have the turkey zonk out for a minute. Let them go. They'll know what to do. <laughs> yeah, over it. Well, yeah. They're just not even close. Yeah, okay. It's all about the conservation of mass. <laughs> so, if the dog's pooping in the car, that means the dog had poop in its stomach. It had to come from somewhere. So the key is before you put it in the car, you give your dog a laxative. <laughs> and then you, you give it about 10 minutes at home in the yard, and its stomach will be clean, there'll be nothing to poop in the car. You know, I would actually go in the complete opposite yeah, direction. Yeah, but, but you're... But, but. I was just gonna say, um, new on the market, fresh off the, the call in number, doggy butt plugs. <laughs> <laughs> Another woman will just make your car for you. 
<laughs> he wants to just take him up back now. Or... <laughs> well, uh, Pen's pal, can you can you can you save him? Yeah, I can save you. You see, whenever you have a problem, especially, especially with breastfeeding in the, the nipple region, all you gotta do is call eight seven seven cash. Maybe I'm 
Okay. Um, and then, just to get those last few remaining fibers that are still feebly twitching, you go with a fine grit. Maybe with a little bit of uh, tongue oil, and uh, that will take care of your problems. Awesome. And, and the best part is that wasn't the worst advice. <laughs> he makes that oil himself, by the way. Probably. I mean, despite uh, Joe Lobb's old-fashioned homemade tongue oil from Real Tongue, uh, which is wonderful on one's b-hole, but not the best advice for a hemorrhoid. Now, trust me on this, a lot of people, scientists, doctors, done. They don't know nothing. I did all this research on Google like 10 minutes ago. You can totally pop those things like a fucking zip. <laughs> That's what you gotta do. You just squat over and just like grab real hard, real tight. Just like maybe get like two pieces of metal to like get some real leverage on it. Just go for it. It's done. It's out. <laughs> you should listen to him. He is a doctor. <laughs> I am a doctor. <laughs> Could be an amateur clown. Could be a <laughs> <laughs> 